Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It's Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. I'm Andrew Hansen, ready to break down this six-game NBA DFS slate for you. Looking forward to it. We've got a doubleheader on TNT, starting off with Trey Young going to Boston against Jason Tatum and company. Then we've got the 10 o'clock late night hammer featuring Luca and LeBron in LA. A lot to get to there and unpack. But I'll start with the early games here, work through it one at a time, and see if we can build some winners on DraftKings, FanDuel, and then, of course, Yahoo for our members. All right, so in these six games, we have four of the of the 12 teams involved in a back-to-back. -back, but an island game in the first one for Detroit and Washington, uh, that's at 7 o'clock Eastern. It's a 217 total, Washington favored by 3.5. Some moving parts, primarily on the bench with Detroit, uh, for the injury news, we have Frank Jackson probable to get back out there after missing five games with a back injury. Uh, Bagley is doubtful, and then Diallo is questionable. And on the Washington side, we have Porzingis still out. Now, in general, I'm not too fired up about this game. Uh, Washington has a slow pace. Uh, both teams are pretty bad defensively. Uh, they are both toward the bottom defensively. But again, when you have these inefficient offenses, uh, you can't hope for too much. But I'll start with the Detroit side here. And uh, Corey Joseph and Kate Cunningham, I wouldn't mind one of those plays. Uh, Corey Joseph, really cheap, around $4,000, uh, but you know hasn't been crushing it lately. Cade Cunningham in the 7K range, you know he has that triple-double upside, uh, but he's been inconsistent lately. Um, really Jeremy Grant is the guy I think I'd most likely play because he's so cheap on FanDuel. He's 5,900, but really more of a GPP option. Both he and Bay are just inconsistent. They had big games in the last one, duds before that, and Grant has really underperformed lately. That's price. That's why his price is so low. Uh, you could look there, though. Stewart is a reasonable price, 5,000 DraftKings, 52 on FanDuel, and it's a good matchup for centers against Washington. But there are some other centers on this slate that are cheap that I like better, and that's one of the key aspects of this slate. Uh, that's the value position I think I like the most. So I probably won't get to Stewart because of that. And then I'm really unlikely to go to this Detroit bench, especially right now without knowing who's playing. Kind of an important piece of news. They are pretty cheap, though. Hayes uh, has been getting... You know, some minutes, and he's been more productive. Magruder, GPP option in the 3K range, but he takes a big hit uh, if Jackson and or Diallo are playing. And then Olenek, how about that game winner against Charlotte? That was exciting. Um, you know, he's a fair price right around 5000 but uh, unlikely to go there on this slate. So with Detroit mostly being a pass, let's take a look at the Washington side. And with Porzingis still out, what we've been seeing here is... Neto, KCP, Kispert, Kuzma, and Gafford. Now, Kuzma has been on a roll here since the All-Star break. Two straight games, over 60 fantasy points. But I don't think he gets there for three in a row. I think Jeremy Grant can do a decent job and, and keep him under that mark. So I probably will fade Kuzma, um, but he is getting a lot of usage, you know, over 20 shots. So it's it's tempting. Uh, Neto and KCP are really good prices. Basically, Kuzma is the only expensive guy. Um, so you could get some exposure here to a guy getting big minutes as a starter in that mid 4K range with Neto or KCP. Uh, probably won't get to Kispert, but Gafford, here's the price that I really like. 3600 on DraftKings for him. That seems too cheap. Uh, we know he can really pile up the fantasy points per minute. Uh, and he's been getting a nice bulk of the play over Bryant, who I, I can't believe he's 4,000 on DraftKings and Gafford is 3,600. doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, I, I will have some exposure to Gafford. And then I don't think I'll get to anybody on that Washington bench. Ish Smith, about the same price as Neto, uh, Denny Avdia, and then Rui. Those guys are, are also inconsistent. Uh, no big surprise with these teams well under 500 that you get that inconsistency. So really mostly a pass here other than Gafford and, you know, maybe Grant in a GPP. 
All right, game two. Let's go to 7.30 and start this TNT doubleheader with Atlanta and Boston. Uh, Boston favored by 6.5. Island game for both teams. Total is 226.5, and and that seems a little bit high to me. These teams have played three times already. And how about their totals? 209 and then 200 and 200 even. So I'm not seeing 226 as a real likely spot for this game to get to. Uh, the These teams do have good offenses in terms of efficiency. And we like that Atlanta has a bad defense. But Boston has really been awesome defensively. They're up to number two on the season in that department. And they're playing at a slow pace. They're 23rd. So a lot of times they're holding their opponents under 100 points. They are coming off a dud uh, against Indiana, but that was a back-to-back on the road with some strange start times. Al Horford missed the last game. Uh, So I think they'll get it together a little bit more defensively here in this one. Uh, But let's look at the actual players and the price tags. There's a couple things I would consider here. Uh, First of all, with Atlanta, we have Lou Williams still out, and then John Collins is doubtful. So if he is out, then we should see Trey Young, Herder, Hunter, Gallinari, and Capella. Trey Young, obviously the guy we want to start to analyze first, but right around 10,000 on DraftKings, it's a little bit much for me. You know, he hasn't done too well against Boston this year. He did in the last game against them get 30 points and 10 assists, but on average, he's gotten only 44 DraftKings points. So not really interested in that 4.4x return. And for the season against Boston, he's only shooting 33% from the field. So we got to give a lot of credit to Marcus Smart. Um, And I'm likely to fade Trey Young. There's some other expensive guards that I would rather play over him tonight. Herter and Hunter in that mid 4K range, um, you know, if they hit their threes, they could pay that off, but not planning to go there. Gallinari, same thing, you know, 4,900 on both sides. It's a good price for him. As a starter, he's had some upside. He has had some duds. And again, with Al Horford coming back into the lineup and Boston ultra motivated defensively, you know, I'm hesitant to play any of these Hawks. I probably won't get to Compella because, like like I said, I like some of the value centers better tonight. And then with the Atlanta bench, uh, Bogdanovich is playable for me. He's probably the guy I'm most likely to play. 5,900 on DraftKings is fair. You know, he's been getting big minutes uh, off the bench and scoring it well lately. Probably won't get to DeLon Wright or Okongwu. You know, there's been some inconsistency in the minutes with Capella and Okongwu. So I'm going to stay away from that situation tonight against Boston's tough interior defense. As for the Celtics, let's start with their big star, Tatum. Uh, He, in contrast to Trey Young, has been a little bit better on average against Atlanta this season compared to against everyone else, including a 38 and 10 performance last time they met 9,800 on DraftKings is a little pricey for me, but 8,900 on FanDuel is a good price, I think for Tatum. So I'll consider him there. Marcus Smart, I think is fair as well. Low six K range of both sites, a more of a cash game, steady option if you look there, but there are a couple other guards in that price range. I like a little bit better. I don't know if I'll get to Jalen Brown, Horford or Robert Williams. And then with the bench, it's been a pretty tight rotation here, especially with those guards. It's been Peyton Pritchard and, and Derek white. I'm surprised white is so much more than Peyton, you know, on DraftKings, Derek white, 6,000 Peyton, 3,700 Peyton's outplayed him. The last couple games, he had a real nice stretch uh, during those two road games, shooting it well. So there's a GPP option. Uh, and then with the bigs, um, let's dig in here a little bit to that rotation because they've tightened it in general and they haven't been playing all four bigs. And we saw uh, Grant Williams start against Indiana. Horford didn't play at all. And Tice got some minutes. But with Horford back in the lineup tonight alongside Robert Williams, we should see Grant Grant go back to the bench. Uh, and he's a nice price in the 3K range, but you know, I'm not quite sure about the minutes tonight uh, because I think Tice matches up pretty well against Okongwu. So I think that's just a situation to avoid. Uh, and with the, the, the values elsewhere, I'm very comfortable doing that. All right, let's hit the other 730 game. It's Brooklyn and Toronto. 
a rematch of last night. Man, what a blowout that was. Toronto 133 to 97 in Brooklyn as Kyrie and uh, the rest of the big three looked on. Simmons and Durant, they'll, they'll still both be out tonight, of course. But since this one's going to be in Toronto, Kyrie Irving can play. There are some other question marks with Brooklyn coming out of last night. Drummond banged up that knee. He's questionable. Cam Thomas is questionable with a hand issue. And then on the Toronto side, lots of news to look at here with some big dominoes. Fred Van Vliet is questionable after sitting out last night with the knee issue. And then OG Ananobi, I'm recording this early afternoon. All of a sudden, he's questionable uh, with that finger, the right ring finger. So we'll keep an eye on that one. DJ Wilson is questionable. He banged up his knee in the game last night as well. All right, so let's let's talk about Brooklyn. How do they recover from that 36-point beatdown last night? Uh, this is a 219.5 total. Toronto, the healthy favorites again here by 8.5. And Brooklyn just has to hope that the presence of Kyrie changes everything. And it sure did when they played Milwaukee in that last one. Um, and so how much of a factor is he? You know, he was 38-5-5 and against the Bucs. Uh, on the slate tonight, he's over 10,000 on both sites. But I do think he's playable. He should get a ton of shots. Uh, so I I'm open to playing Kyrie. You look at the rest of the starters, Seth Curry, low 6K range. Uh, really, all of those starters had duds last night. They didn't play more than 24 minutes. Uh, Brooklyn kind of threw in the towel, played the young guys a bunch in the second half. So you would expect better out of Seth Curry. Bruce Brown, mid 5K range is a fine price for him. James Johnson, and then Drummond. Uh, so we'll see about him. If he starts uh, upper 6K range, uh, yeah, he could get that done as a starter. That's what you want for him. But again, I like the value centers tonight, so I'm not going to go there. If he's out, you know, then we'll just have to see what uh, the plans are for Brooklyn. We've got a lot of options in that in that front court. Marcus Aldridge, of course, in the mid 4K range, he could get out there. We've got Claxton, Blake Griffin, Dayron Sharp. Sharp looked pretty good in his mop up duty last night. He's ultra cheap. Uh, you've got Edwards in that front court. Um, you know, Nash, they've been a little bit inconsistent with their rotations. Um, so I think you I think you tread lightly with Brooklyn here. Wait and see who's active. Uh, we've also got Goran Dragic as a question mark for me because his minutes have been limited. In his two games, he's had 14 and then 17 minutes. But with him being on a minutes restriction and this being a back-to-back, I'm not sure I'm, you know, if he's going to play. So we'll have to wait and see on that. If he does not play, then that should give a boost to Patty Mills and Cam Thomas if Cam Thomas plays. So you can see all the hypotheticals here. Uh, but you know, nobody jumping off the page in any event to me, other than Kyrie Irving. So we look at Kyrie or pass at this point for Brooklyn on the Toronto side. Uh, I'm interested in Fred Van Vliet. He looked fine walking around the bench, cheering on his teammates uh, last night. You know, was this situation where they just, you know, plan to give him the front end off and then play in the tougher matchup against the Brooklyn Nets that have Kyrie Irving in Toronto? You know, wouldn't surprise me if all if, at all if that was the game plan. So with Van Vliet, if he's out there and Kyrie is out there and this is a closer game, then I'm open to playing Van Vliet, you know, especially on FanDuel where he's only 7,500. And then we'll just have to see about Ananobi. That's a pretty big domino. Um, if he starts, perhaps they put Birch back to the bench. Birch has been sort of a placeholder as a starter, 13 minutes and 10 minutes the last two games. You know, they've really been coming in heavy with this, this size off the bench in Thaddeus Young, Achua, and Boucher. Uh, it's been an interesting new rotation. And so Ananobi just crowds it even more if he's out there and Birch is coming off the bench. Uh, we've got Barnes and Siakam to consider. Siakam doesn't seem to have been at 100% here recently after having that illness. Didn't do a lot last night. He's over 8,000 tonight. 
Uh, but Barnes, man, he stole the show against Brooklyn. 28 points, 16 rebounds, four assists, and six stocks last night. A lot of his baskets were on offensive rebounds and easy putbacks. That's why he shot such a high percentage. And Brooklyn really struggled uh, on that defensive glass. The size of Toronto really got to them. And you got to figure Brooklyn will look at that tape and try to make some adjustments to you know clean up that, that defensive glass. But sometimes the size uh, can just be too much. Um, and we know that Brooklyn is playing a lot of young guys. Uh, so, uh, you know, Barnes, do we think he's going to go for, you know, 60 fantasy points again? Probably not on this back to back, but he's so cheap. 5,500 on FanDuel, man. So that's why I'm even more interested in this Ananobi news. Um, so we'll, we'll wait and see on that. And again, this is the seven thirty game. So if you, if you fade Detroit and Washington at seven, and you use the you know these last five games starting at seven thirty for your lineup, then you can make adjustments uh, and multiple pivots based on that uh, Toronto lineup news. All right, after that we're going to get to the eight o'clock games, starting with the Clippers and the Rockets. And this is a rematch from Sunday. The Clippers won that one ninety nine ninety eight. Uh, I'm surprised it was that low scoring. Uh, the total here tonight, 229 and a half. Clippers favored by seven. You know, these teams are really uh, pretty fast. You know, Houston's number one in the league. Clippers are 12th. Uh, and the Rockets are 30th defensively. But these offenses are inefficient, really towards the bottom. Uh, a lot of stars out, of course. Uh, and the Clippers have a good defense. So you know, I would think it would be a little higher scoring than that one, but uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe not over 230, but uh, I certainly, you know, if 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 there was going to be one game going into 230 range, I would I would expect the Clippers Rockets over Atlanta Boston, um, but obviously Atlanta and Boston they've got better players out there, better offensive players. So um, in terms of the totals here, I kind of like the next one even better, Golden State Minnesota. But let's let's dig in here on the Clippers and the Rockets. Uh, We've got uh, you know a little bit of a consistent rotation finally for the Clippers with all their injuries. It's been Reggie, Terrence Mann, Morris, Batum, and Zubats. Reggie and Zubats were the stars of that game on Sunday against Houston. Reggie was twenty six nine and six, and he's right on the borderline for me with his pricing tonight. Eighty two hundred DraftKings, seven thousand FanDuel. I, I will have some exposure to him on both sides, but I haven't quite decided if he'll be in that first lineup or not. Zubots, man, what a performance. 14 points, 15 rebounds, three assists, and seven stocks. He really woke up, and that's been a change here because before the All-Star break, you remember Clippers and Rockets played then as well. So these guys are playing a lot lately. And right before the break, it was Hardenstein who had a huge game against the Rockets. So maybe that woke Zubats up a little bit. Um, again, don't think he'll match that performance tonight. But he's that mid-tier center that I like tonight, if you want to pay up a little bit. After Jackson and Zubats, I think Mann is a fair price, just over $6,000. Um, but I want to talk about these forwards, Morris, Batum, and Covington. So Morris you know, has taken a hit lately with Covington. But there has been a little change in that rotation as well because for uh, a period of time there, Covington was coming in for Morris and they weren't playing at all together. So Covington was really limiting the upside of Morris and didn't make sense to play them both. Uh, Batum has had his minutes go down, so I'm not going to play him. But the one thing I want to mention is that at the end of that last game against Houston, Morris and Covington were out there together. So they did overlap some, and we're going to have to keep an eye on that uh, to see how the Clippers finish games and does it depend on the opponent. Um, so both Morris and Covington are a little bit more attractive to me now than they were after seeing them both finish the game together. I don't think I'll get to Morris today because of his price, but Covington 
I'll consider at 4,100 on DraftKings and 48 on FanDuel. Uh, Hardenstein, I'm going to fade, uh, and it'll be Zubats only if I go to the center position there. And then Kennard and Coffee, I, I think, are both fairly priced for what they've been doing. Uh, Kennard had a nice stretch there, shooting threes leading into that All Star break where he was in the three point competition. Uh, but I, I don't think you need to go there tonight. And let's look at the Houston side. They have a front end. They're going to play Utah tomorrow at home. And big question marks, Kevin Porter Jr. and Garrison Matthews, both questionable tonight. If they're both out, then we should see Schroeder, Green, Gordon, Jay Sean Tate, and Wood again, uh, just like we did on Sunday. And Schroeder almost had a triple-double. And he's in the 5K range again on both sites. I, I do like him again tonight. Uh, after that, you know, green is a GPP option. Um, I just don't trust him. You know, we do know that he can score. He's very athletic. Gordon is pretty cheap. Um, but don't think I'll get there tonight. Jay Sean at 6,100 on both sites is playable. Sort of a, a cash game option, similar to Marcus Smart for me in that price range. You know, he finds a way to, to hit value. At that price, pretty often. Wood, uh, I don't think I'll get to him. You know, 7,200 is pretty cheap on FanDuel, but he's not getting 20 plus shots, you know, more like 12 to 15 a lot of nights. And I'd like to see him get more shots if we're going to pay that price for him. And not uh, looking at this Rockets bench, you know, we'll see about Matthews. Uh, Christopher's getting some minutes. Martin has been playing. Uh, Shangun, pretty solid. And then even Nawaba could get out there tonight if Porter Jr. and Matthews are out. But again, I don't plan to go there. All right, let's turn to the highest total game tonight. Golden State, Minnesota, 8 o'clock tip. And this combo is great because both of these teams are top 11 in pace and top 13 in offense. Uh, so we've got that 231.5 total. Golden State favored by one. Uh you know, the only thing we don't like for fantasy is Golden State's number one defense. Minnesota, middle of the road defensively, and they played last night in Cleveland. They won a high-scoring, close game, 127-122. The starters were out there really to the end, and so we'll see what they have left after winning that one in Cleveland and now having to face Golden State. Uh, on the Golden State side, we've got Bielitsa questionable. And then the big news, Clay Thompson is out again. And Iguodala is still out. So for the Golden State lineup, you've got to have Steph out there. Wiggins and Looney, of course. Peyton, I think, will start again. And then we'll see about that fifth starter. Moody started in the last game. Didn't do a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if Kerr shakes it up and goes with really any of these bench guys. Poole, probably not. They probably keep him uh, coming off the bench with his scoring. But Damian Lee... Even Porter or Kaminga wouldn't shock me if they start over Moody. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I kind of like the price for Peyton on DraftKings at 4200 Now, he's really just so great defensively. He's fun to watch, too, with his quickness, anticipation, his nose for the ball. Uh, so he's in the player pool for me. Wiggins is pretty cheap. How about 5500 for him on FanDuel? And he's been a little bit erratic against Minnesota. He started the season, uh, they've played three times. He had 35 points against them in that first one. Then he had a dud of 12, 2, and 4, and then a little better, 19, 5, and 4. Uh, but you average it out, you know, he's back in Minnesota. You got to figure he'll he'll bring it uh, and be able to pay off that price tag. Again, the big thing is with Clay and Iguodala out, especially Clay, he should get a few more looks uh, when he's out there. I also like Looney tonight, mid 4K range. On FanDuel, you can play him as a power forward or a center. Thank you very much. I, I might take advantage of that flexibility. Uh, he started the season with a game against Minnesota where he went 11 and 17. Uh, he's come back down to earth a little bit since then, but he's averaging 27 fantasy points against them. So, right about 6X. Uh, and it's an island game for Golden State. So, we like that. Uh, so, I like uh, Wiggins and Looney. Uh, haven't talked about Steph. Um, you know, is this one of those nights where he just goes berserk? 
uh, like the All-Star game, possibly. But he's really been uh, distributing distributing since the All-Star break. Two straight games with double-digit assists. And Coach Kerr, you know, certainly praising him for that. And, and Steph uh, welcoming that challenge without Draymond out there and, and Clay. Um, so, you know, I don't know if I'll get to him. 10-8 is a lot on DraftKings. Uh, so I don't know if I can get him in there. And then with that bench, uh, pool is is playable. If you want to go more GPP, you can go cheaper with Damian Lee. Uh, Porter, I probably won't get to. Kaminga is interesting, especially if Bielitz is out. Uh, he could pay that off for sure. On the Minnesota side, you know, I'll just get to the point here. Don't I don't love their uh, their position here after that game against Minnesota, uh, against Cleveland traveling. Um, Beverly and 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 the big cat have not been very good on back to backs. Uh, and Golden State has that number one defense. So I'm unlikely to go either spot there. Uh, Russell, mid 7K range. He's been scoring it since the All Star break, uh, but unlikely to make the cut for me. Edwards is maybe that GPP option on FanDuel. That $6,600 price tag kind of dangles out there. How about his first game against Golden State this year? 48 points, six rebounds, five assists. Then his next one, he had nine points, one rebound, two assists. And then back in the middle, the next one, 27, six, and six. So he's the guy I'd be most likely to play. Don't think I'll get to Vanderbilt. And then the bench, you know, if they go 10 deep again, like they did last night, uh, I just don't see myself playing McLaughlin, Beasley, Prince. Uh, or Reed, you know, if I had to play somebody, it would probably be McDaniels at 4,000 on DraftKings, but uh, not planning to go there. All right, one more to go. How about Dallas and the Lakers? Uh, the second half of this TNT doubleheader, it is the late night hammer at 10 Eastern. Not a great total at 217. Dallas favored by five and a half. Uh, we've got, you know, middle of the road offenses. Uh, Lakers actually below average now and Dallas has that slow pace and good defense. So don't really like going against Dallas. Lakers do have a, a pace of second. Uh, we like that. And then they're middle of the road defensively injuries tonight for Dallas guys who are out. Chris Nilakina, Pinson and Burke uh, with the Lakers. AD of course, still out Bradley still out. Reeves is probable. DeAndre Jordan has been waived. DJ Augustin has been signed, but it's uncertain right now if he's going to be available to play tonight. And apparently they're planning to sign good old Wenyan Gabriel, uh, but he's not on either slate and not sure if he's available yet to play. So we'll keep an eye on that throughout the afternoon. And a lot to talk about with the Lakers. But first, let's start with Dallas. Um, since the trade of Porzingis, we've got this new nine-man rotation, Luca, Brunson, DFS, Bullock, and Powell. You know, I wouldn't mind getting Luca out there, but 12000 on DraftKings is, is pretty steep. So I'm more likely to get to him on FanDuel. Not going to play Brunson. You know, he's taking a hit with Dinwiddie. Uh, I w could play DFS or Bullock. Those are the guys who are, you know, they, they've shown repeatedly that if they hit their threes they can pay it off pick up a couple stocks and bullock is only 3700 on DraftKings. sorry on FanDuel as a shooting guard so gpp option there don't think i'll get to powell even though he played awesome against utah uh, he's not the uh value center that i'm looking at in this game uh but i do like dinwiddie here mid 5k range two really strong games here after the All-Star break, 20 points against Utah, and then 24, 4, and 5 against Golden State. Uh, so I like Dinwiddie, and then I don't think I'll get to the rest of that bench. But on the Lakers side here, we got to talk about this, because they had a close loss to the Clippers, and then they got pounded by the Pelicans. 123-95 to at home, turned the ball over 23 times. It got so ugly that the fans were booing the Lakers, uh, there's a lot of back and forth between some of the players and the fans, including LeBron, Russell Westbrook, and Ariza. And 
you know, down the stretch, LeBron came back in the fourth quarter of that one and, you know, could tell, you could tell he was really putting the team on his back, trying to make it a game. Um, and you got to figure that he's going to come out strong tonight. You know, Lakers are just kind of spiraling in the wrong direction. Six games under 500. Uh, they need to start picking up some wins. It's an island game for them. Uh, so LeBron is is on my radar for sure. Uh, Dwight Howard, though, is the value center in this game that I like. In that mid-4K range on both sites, he he was awesome against the Clippers. And then against the Pelicans, he finished with 6 points and 11 rebounds in 22 minutes. I thought he was solid while he was out there. And then in the second half, that's when Vogel you know, just went to the bench and started experimenting. He put DeAndre Jordan out there. DeAndre Jordan threw a pass down court that was so high over his intended target. It went into the stands. If it had been at the hoop, it might've gone over the hoop. It was just this crazy pass. And, you know, Jordan just did not look like he was into it at all. And then sure enough, he gets waved. So without Jordan out there, I, I just think Dwight has to start again. He has to get, you know, 24 minutes or, or more. Um, so, and he's got such a size advantage against Powell that I, I, I'm going to plan to put him out there. It's always scary with Dwight and Vogel. You know, they don't seem to have a great relationship. Uh, sometimes Dwight will just disappear. I think they need him, though. So, you know, hopefully Dwight comes to play because I'm going to have him out there. Russell Westbrook, you know, <laughs> in that game, he had 16 points, six rebounds, one assist, and seven turnovers. So his assist to turnover ratio wasn't seven to one, it was one to seven. He just would drive into the paint and then just get stopped and then start pivoting with nowhere to go. It was just like he had no plan. He just got caught in no man's land time after time. Lots of bad passes. Uh, you know, really embarrassing the, the the performance he put up against the Pelicans. So how does he respond? You know, I don't trust him on DraftKings at 8,300, but 66 on FanDuel, man, we're getting pretty low for him. Uh, and when these two teams played earlier, it was one of Westbrook's better games of the season. He was 23 points, 10 rebounds, 9 assists, and AD played in that game. So without AD, you know, this is an opportunity for Westbrook. I know he hasn't been shooting that much. You know, he looks like he's kind of going through the motions offensively. Um, and, you know, it's like almost like he's okay with the fact that he's playing so poorly. Uh, so at one point, does he wake up? Um, you know, if he does, he could smash 6,600, but very, you know, very hesitant to go there the way that he looked against the Pelicans. Austin Reeves, uh, I mentioned he's probable with an ankle issue that he picked up late in that game. Remember when they played before, that's when he hit that buzzer beater uh, to win that three-pointer and finished 15-7-2 and two in that game. And he's been starting recently, but he hasn't done much as a starter. Uh, so I probably won't get to him. Uh, but after LeBron and, and Dwight, uh, not going to play Ariza as a starter. You know, he's just kind of been holding down the fort until Melo comes in uh, for his scoring punch. Melo playable at 4,800 on both sites. Uh, after that, you know, Monk has, has been down lately. THT has been a little bit better. So I'd be more likely to go to him. Uh, not going to get to Stanley Johnson. Keep an eye on Ellington. He came in there and hit some threes. He's cheap. He could be a bigger part of the rotation tonight. Uh, and then again, keep an eye on DJ Augustine, because if he plays, uh, then he, he'll he probably take away a little bit from THD. Maybe their signing of Augustine will be the thing that wakes Westbrook up a little bit. And you know, if he wants to protect his minutes, uh, maybe he'll get back to playing like Russell Westbrook. All right, that's the six-game slate. If you want my lineups tonight, join us at DFSCoachTalk.com. I'll be giving out my DraftKings Coaches Clipboard with core plays highlighted on DraftKings, which could certainly change between now and lock with any news that pops up. And I'll be giving out our full FanDuel and Yahoo lineups, cash lineups, and GPP, so you can plug and play those. Uh, again, sign up on our website, DFSCoachTalk.com. You'll come into our Discord, and then I'll give out those lineups uh, 20 to 25 minutes before lock tonight. Any membership you get, you get access to all of our sports. So you get the golf lineups uh, tomorrow. 
Um, and of course, we've got NBA going seven days a week. So any questions, reach out to us on Twitter at DFS Coach Talk. You can also find me on Twitter at Language Olympic. Coach will be back tomorrow to keep the NBA fun rolling along. And I hope everybody has a great night tonight watching these games and playing DFS. Let's get March off to a good start, shall we? All right. Uh, thank you very much for, for tuning in. On behalf of the entire DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. We'll see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS.